So come one, come all, bring a friend, a lover, or go stag. The play employs humor, and it keeps the audience sympathizing and agreeing as well as laughing. It's a must-see. Get your tickets to Orgasms, the play. Call 877-C-PLAY. That's 877-C-PLAY. 877-S-E-E-P-L-A-Y. Or log on to orgasmstheplay.com. Or go to SohoPlayhouse.com. Orgasms, the play. Experience What's up, y'all? This today. is Bill Bellamy. How you doing? Yeah, what up, y'all? This your boy, Young Lloyd, man. Newest, youngest member of the Science family. fam. But how you doing? Yo, what's up? This is Tracy Morgan. How you doing? Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Y Clef Young. How you doing? I'm Wendy's mom. Hi, I'm Wendy's dad. And both of us want to know... How you doing? How you doing? The Wendy Williams Experience. Mr. Engineer, please, some music. Would you please, would you give us a record, por favor? Everybody, it's still the Wendy Williams experience. My new CD, Wendy Williams Brings the Heat, Volume 1. It will be in stores um, next Tuesday, June 28th. If you happen to live in New York City, I will be doing a signing from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the FYE Record Store in Rockefeller Center. I look forward to seeing you all there. Um, you know, pick up a copy of the CD. I'll sign it. We exchange a few words and we keep it moving. And I appreciate in advance. Um, all of your support thus far. So I was telling you guys yesterday, but maybe some of you didn't hear it, that T.I. is going to star in a movie based on his own life. Well, he says it's going to be a lot grittier than 8 Mile with Eminem. Here's his quote. I think it'll be more dramatic than 8 Mile and more action-packed. My trouble was a little more extreme, getting in shootouts, going to jail, selling dope. M had domestic problems. I had ghetto problems. Hmm. That would be one I would like to see in the movies, T.I. Especially because I love your little Mrs. Almost wifey, um, little tiny from Escape. I love her. Shout out to Escape. Love you girls. Work hard and get that product finished. Come on, come on, come on. Destiny's Child is over. So uh, we're waiting for that, that girl group sensation. Come on, Escape. Bring it back. Bring it back. Mm. Robert De Niro is on the front cover of um, a couple of newspapers around the country today, one being the Post and one being the News. It's talking about how this housekeeper hired from a maid service, um, who apparently has cleaned houses to a lot of stars, um, had a propensity of well, stealing things. Fur coats, suede coats, diamonds, all kind of stuff. She stole from Candace Bergen. She stole from Isabella Rossellini. And most recently, she stole from Robert De Niro and his girlfriend, Grace Hightower. Or is that his wife? I, I get confused. I think that's his longtime girlfriend. They have kids together and whatnot. Anyway, um, but I got a fax from somebody who signs off by saying, someone who knows the true tea. Now, I will preface this by saying, these are not my opinions. And this is alleged. But I found it interesting. So I'll read it to you. Wendy, let me tell you something. I happen to know Bob personally, and I also know Grace. Yeah, really. Who wouldn't... Um, oh, excuse me. You really wouldn't have to steal from Grace. Her ass stays so friggin' pit, uh, tipsy. Huh? She misplaces everything. Also, if that nanny poses any kind of threat to Grace, i.e. being young, pretty, you know what I'm saying, then she's just ass out of a job. And let's talk about how Grace got engaged in the first place. Bob had a little holiday get-together, and after he was good and toasted, Grace pulled out a three-carat emerald-cut ring, and she announced their engagement. Shut up! Shut up! All these lies make for great stories on the show. Shut up. I'm trying to protect my behind legally. Shut up. She waited until he was good and drunk. <laughs> and pulled out a ring. <laughs> Announced their engagement. Look, it goes on to say, he didn't even know till the next day that he was engaged to Ms. Hightower. At the time, Tukey Smith had just had a set of twin boys. And Grace felt as though she had to be in competition. Oh, signing off someone who knows the true tea. Hmm. How perfectly 
scandalous. I think I shared you guys, uh, shared the story with you guys, or maybe I shared it with you in my head. I'm not even sure. But um, there are enough people trying to lose weight, enough people doing it through gastric bypass surgery that um, you need to know that um, Carney Wilson is, is, is getting right back into shape that she was prior to um, getting pregnant and having her baby. And that's good to know because I was a little nervous. Like, okay, how much weight is she going to gain? Um, will she undo all the good work gastric bypass has done? Or will she continue to fly the pa- uh, flag for, um, you know, being fit, staying healthy, and gastric bypass surgery? Um, well, apparently, she she did what she wanted while she was on um, while she was pregnant. Here's her quote: "If I wanted carbs, I ate carbs." She's five feet three, and she went from 170 pounds before pregnancy to 240 pounds after pregnancy. She then delivered their daughter Lola. She says that she's already lost 40 pounds thanks to a healthy, now low carb diet and walking and breastfeeding. Um, she said her weight goal is to be down to 145, 150 pounds. She said she's cutting out everything white, um, pasta, bread, and rice. And she's eating lots of protein and vegetables and fruit. And she's planning on tracking her process in a running diary on Carney's Outrageous cha- uh, Carney's Courageous Challenge on Gastric Bypass Web. And here's the web in case you would like to follow what Carney's up to. It's called Light and hope.com but you spell like l i t e light and a n d e h o p e light and hope.com and here's her final quote i will lose the weight and people will be like wow i can do it too i love her for doing this what an inspiration an inspiration oh back to ashton kutcher uh, just real quickly this time Apparently, uh, there was a, a premiere of his television show, excuse me, a big party for his television show, Beauty and the Geek, back in May. Now, you know this show got picked up for a second season. I've never seen this show. It already sounds like a stupid show. And with him on it, I, you know, as the producer or whatever, I just, I'm so not interested. But anyway, um, people are still saying that, you know, why is Demi so tight-lipped lip, about her pregnancy? You know, she's about five months along right now. They are expecting, allegedly, a little girl. Um, but the eyebrows, you know, got real high when um, she didn't accompany him to the television show party in New York for Beauty and the Geek. Uh, sidebar, did anybody think that, you know, at four months pregnant and being over 40, that she might need to take a few extra precautions did anybody think that she might be bed resting or whatever? Or maybe her ankles were a little swollen that day? What is the big deal? Not everybody can get poked and be out the whole nine months doing stuff. Anyway, so I don't, I don't look at that as a sign that they broke up when a pregnant woman doesn't escort her husband. Especially a pregnant woman of a certain age. Well, they say he spent most of the time at the high profile party sitting in a corner with his cap pulled down low. The only pictures of her... The wags are saying since announcing that she's or since the word leaked out that she's pregnant, they say they describe it as being dowdy clothing, a stark contrast to her usual glamorous image. Some photos even show her carrying a bulky handbag strategically placed over her midsection. Yeah, that would be her legendary black Hermes bag that she carries all the time, which I absolutely love. I, I have a black hair maze, uh, one of these Birkin bags. I didn't want black because it was such a plain color and they come in such juicy colors and stuff. So I had waited on the guest list that, or, or waited on the waiting list forever. I got a light blue one. And then um, an acquaintance of the family um, I found was going to Paris. And um, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be picky about colors. Just get me, you know, two more of them. And so I got a red one and a black one. And I carry the daylights out of them until I got, I have this Gucci Boston bag, which is actually my bag of choice now. I got it um, in the the spring. I mean, in the fall, actually. And I carry it, like, all the time. I don't happen to have it today. I got my Luella bag. I love the Luella bags. Nice, juicy colors. Big, bright pink. Luella Bartley. Luella Bartley, um, as a matter of fact, look at my segues. Look how one blends into the other. I happen to have an interview somewhere in my stuff with Luella. Hold on. Let me me see what's going on over here. Um, Here it is. They ask her, um, 
what mood are you trying to evoke this season? Meaning fall, because everybody's talking about fall now. And she says, dandy as opposed to lady. The attitude of the 80s. London clubs combined with English hunting ball. I don't get that. So I'm not a particular fan of the Luella clothes, but I like the bags. They ask her, what's the essential Luella look for fall? And she says, calf length skirts polka dot shirts worn with badly dyed hair and goth black rimmed eyes hmm. any tips for personalizing your pieces and she says everything can be worn with jeans and the Luella girl likes her long lean drain pipe fit oh well that's me I do love a long lean you know like during the summer you know you have them cut off at the knees and stuff like that but in order to get them long I have to take two pair of jeans and I explained this to you a million times. What kind of time do we have left on the break? I'm about to go into um, eyelashes in the other room. Maybe, Steve, maybe you can come in here and you start the eyelashes for the party. Bow Wow's coming to the party tonight. He's in town. He was supposed to come on the show yesterday. I mean, he's doing a whole bunch of other press and everything like that. So it's not like he came to town just to come to my pink carpet party. But instead, everybody, we're going to bow wow on the show um, uh, around the time of July 12th because that's when his CD comes in stores. And I thought that would excuse me, be a much better opportunity to, um, you know, have him on the show and promote his product. But he, and I guess his mom, will be at the party on the pink carpet tonight. Yeah, that's going to be a great party. The pink carpet rolls out at 8 o'clock. Do I have um, a semblance of a, of a guest list? Did I tell you that In Touch magazine called up yesterday? They said that they're down with the, with the get down. Shout out to all the press who's coming out to cover this party. You know, I, it, wow. Wow. My VH1 family's going to be inside with the cameras and stuff. Maybe we can use some of that footage and finish out the next Wendy Williams is on fire, huh? <laughs> How about that? Hey, you know what? If you go to VH1.com, you will see the schedule for Wendy Williams is on fire. It happens to be a repeat of the Janice Dickinson interview episode. God, I hated my hair during that interview. Oh, my God, it was at my shoulders. It was a point where, like, I go through these things where, okay, I don't want my clipping hair past my shoulders. I want it at my shoulders. I want it to be, I want bangs and, you know, like that. And then I look on TV, I'm like, what was I thinking? It's like the cover of the book, The Wendy Williams Experience. I was in a short hair mode then. I wanted all my clipping hair. I wanted it all short. And now I look at that and I'm like, what was I thinking? Anyway, um... I say all that to say, um, Bow Wow's going to be at the party. Um, Vanessa Williams, Tommy Hilfiger, Puffy's coming through. He said he's going to clink a bottle, give me a hug, and take some pictures. Flick, flick, flick it up. Nice, thank you. I got three different pair of shoes to wear for the party. One pair that's five inches I got from Petite Patan, this fabulous shoe store on 8th Street, downtown Manhattan. You can go to their website if you're from out of town. Trust and believe. Their shoes are wonderful. And um, I'm going to wear those on the red carpet. But with five and a half inches, I'm not planning on teetering through the club in them. I just want to take them off. And I'm going to go to my mid heel shoe, which is three inches. And then somewhere around um, the latter part of the party, I will go into my lower shoes. And before you know it, I will be barefoot drunk and deliriously happy <laughs> i hope <laughs> anyway everybody it's time for me to run oh i've had so much fun with you today listen don't forget to check oh it's oh we're still oh my gosh i'm sorry i'm sorry wait it's time for me to run the next break don't forget i got a website though it's called wendy williams uh, the Wendy Williams Experience.com. We're going to get right back to our poll questions and whatnot. Just give us a moment on that. And um, you can go on there and find out all kind of information about all kind of stuff. So, uh, oh, and the phones are open and the fax machine still working. 866 Get Wendy for the phones. 866 Wendy Fax for the fax machine. Um, a special shout out to everybody in New Orleans listening on Q93. Don't forget, we got a date at the club tomorrow night, okay? All right, New Orleans. I'm coming to see you, baby. I know I'm new in town, but come out and, and let's get to know each other all right and uh we'll be back wendy man presently my um husband just got discharged from the military but now he's home and i just want to tell him to get the f 
out. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> what up? This is the Diabolical Piz Marquis, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. I'm going to test this out real quick on you. Now keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my sh**. <laughs> so y'all be nice about it. All right. Yo, did you catch this flashback? I feel bad. I was cracking whip on Zoe and she was here till 4 o'clock in the morning. She was? What was she doing here until 4 o'clock in the morning? Waiting you. for Steve Harvey? <laughs> hmm? Who was she here with? She's an intern. Sharon. Her and Sharon was here kind of late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On that big, soft couch Damn. in our office. I'm fine. Thank you, Zoe. Did you have the radio on in that other room? No. Were you guys talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> but of course. We're you talking about how you... Wait, hold on. Here comes Taryn. You want to talk about her too? What were you girls doing here until 4 o'clock in the morning together? Ah. Hit the proper button. <laughs> oh, on, that, on that soft, luxurious couch. Yes, well, no, you didn't, because Zoe is a virgin. But I know as a virgin, technically speaking, being that you can't penetrate, uh, Taryn, she could still, you know what I'm saying? How you doing, girls? All right. We were working for the party. Bet you were working, working it out. Right, Trav? Working for the party. All right. I bet you were working and partying. All that brown juice and liquor at the bar, at the bar in the office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, girls, I appreciate your hard work. I appreciate you all being able to be a part of the jokes here on the show as well. You're not offended, are you? No, no, no. All right. How you doing? All right. <laughs> you say it, Zoe. How you doing? All right. And Terry, you say it. All right. <laughs> there they go. Back to the office together. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, I'm just catching my fifth wind. In advance, I want to thank you for being here today. You know I love you for listening. Oh, and regarding that Lisa Lefi Lopez mom, Wanda Lopez Coleman, suing the um, Mitsubishi dealer or automakers over the Montero that flipped over and eventually rolled and Lisa left eye hit her head and um, they're saying that that blow to the head is what killed her and right now what Miss Lopez Coleman is doing and she's conducting a full blown investigation she filed her lawsuit against Miss Sabishi and she's saying that her daughter was driving in a car that was easily uh, susceptible to tipping over and nobody ever told her daughter about the car well, they've dug up a 2001 Consumer Report. And in that 2001 Consumer Report, it gave the Montero Limited a not acceptable safety rating after testing the SUV and six others using sharp turns to moderate speed. Only the Mitsubishi appeared to be vulnerable to rollover. Wow. There were a lot of people in the car with Lisa Left Eye. Everybody survived except for her. And as I reported before, um, a few days ago, one of the girls um, is actually suing the estate of Lisa Left Eye Lopez because she's been through multiple surgeries and a lot of pain and suffering, and she still walks with a limp. And she's a performance artist. Actually, she is a member of a group that Lisa was trying to put together. So obviously, being a performance artist, this has impeded on her, um, on her would-be income. I wanted to remind you real quick of the Bodylicious Cruise. Don't forget, we are cruising. We are going from Miami to the Bahamas, November 4th through November 7th. This is called the Bodylicious Cruise 2005. I hosted this cruise last year. It was fantastic. It is totally grown, totally adult, totally grown and sexy. Top name entertainment. Uh, on board. Uh, not to say that Jada Kiss and Mario Winans are going to be performing, but they are confirmed to be my guest celebrity uh, guests on this boat. It's going to be a lot of fun already, right? Plus, I'm going to bring my comedians along with the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. We're going to have, we always have the wet contest. We wet the men's private area in some flimsy underwear, see what they pack in. Then we wet girls' t-shirts with no bra to see what's going on. And we usually do this somewhere after midnight, after, you know, too much brown juice and, and get right. And, uh, 
and then it goes down. And what goes on the boat stays on the boat. Constant flow of alcohol, constant flow of food, constant parties. We take dance classes together if you want to. Look, there's nobody like Julie from the Love Boat clapping their hands and saying, okay, it is now time to learn how to strip for your man. If you don't want to learn how to strip for him, fine. If you do, you know, I'll be in the Lido deck. And, and, and we're going to work it out. And we put on some of that Luke music. And we got professional strippers on board. Actually, Stacey Ja Johnson, who um, she's my co-host um, on the boat. She's an actress slash, um, I, I don't want to say stripper, but I will say uh, she knows how to do the damn thing. <laughs> Um, and, and she hires a whole band of girls who, who teach courses like in belly dancing and, and, and exotic dancing and whatnot. Um, of course, there's casino on board. Didn't I tell you the kind of boat we're riding on? It's the Royal Caribbean. Zolling. Come on. Nothing less than the best for you. Uh, what is that? Nothing but the best for you. Sorry. The payments are easy. Casino, spades, uh, tournaments, everything on, on board. Uh, yoga. Yoga. Uh, par- Did I say the parties? Okay. Did I mention Jada Kiss and Mario Wani? Okay, exactly, exactly. Let me give you the telephone number, okay? 866 877, excuse me, 877 878 3262. We're cruising November 4th through November 7th aboard the fabulous Royal Caribbean. It's the Bodylicious Cruise. You can also go to the website, bodyliciouscruise.com, or you can go to this website, strip. For my man.com. And here's that telephone number once again, 877 878 3262. If you forget all that I just said, then go to my website. It's the Wendy Williams Experience.com. Look for the information and, and reserve your, um, your cabin now. We are going to have a fabulous time. I'm going to tell you, November 4th through November 7th, it's going to be wonderful. Dear Wendy, I'm a 28 year old woman. And I have a serious issue. I was separated from my now ex-husband when I met this guy. I eventually got pregnant and had a beautiful baby girl. In the beginning, he said he was divorced and had no kids. He had introduced me to this girl he brought by my home and said it was his sister. This girl comes to my house, cat, ate my food, does her hair, and we even hung out together. And she never said anything. She even called him her brother, when she talked about him. Sometimes he would call and said he's locked up and she would give him money. Oh, and and I should give money to his sister. Well, Wendy, I got pregnant, so I thought he didn't want me. I got pregnant, so I thought he didn't want me to be around. Huh? I spent nearly $12,000 on lawyer's fees and bills for him. After I had the baby, I moved back home to my mother's, and he hardly called, so I paid a private eye, and the man found out that his sister was really his wife, and he has four other children, not with his wife. Now, when I call him, and they, they found out that I know this bitch went to the police and told them I was harassing them, and now I have to go to court... And I'm racking up lawyers' fees. My question to you is, how can I get her back? <sighs> it would seem to me like you'd want to focus on, 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 on trying not to get scammed like this again in your life. I mean, I guess scams can be run on a lot of different people. How can you get her back? How about how can you get him back? How about how can you get yourself back? Aren't you madder at yourself than you are at them? I mean, they were apparently a married couple, scandalous as they may be, broke with no kids, saw you as an easy mark. A place to lay up in, a place to eat the food, maybe food they couldn't afford, uh, somebody to pay his lawyer bills, and you were just strung out on the dills. And having sex while you were separated, not not even divorced. Like, like, Like you were just having him run up in you, raw dog, before the divorce papers were even signed, and you got pregnant. You don't need to get back at anybody. You need to sit in a room and turn off the TV and the radio and think. At 28 years old, you really do. You have time to get your life back together. So I, I wish you well. I wish you well. And, and let this serve as a lesson um, that you can translate into some sort of strength for yourself in the future. Um, the best revenge is success. I, you know, I know that sounds corny, but um, I find that whoever made that up is is a very wise person the best revenge is success none of that eye for an eye or any of that stuff you keep yourself out of harm's way you got to be free and out here to raise your daughter since you chose to have a daughter with a bum 
All right. You all, I, I try to leave you on a high note. I'm sorry for that one, but now my time is up. I love you for listening. I got to do best of shows for the remainder of the week. And I'll talk to you live again on Tuesday. In the meantime, darling, enjoy the best of shows. Shout out to everybody at Q93. I will check you guys out tomorrow night as I'll be in New Orleans. And we're going to be partying at the club. All right, y'all. Bye. These party people. <laughs> See you later. Because I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. This is Ann Trick. Peace, this is Mark. Hey, it's Ellen. And this is Christopher Reed. You know me as Kid from Kid and Play. <laughs> Today we had a great show. Hey, tomorrow you can expect the same. Hey, I'll be back. I'll be back again bright and early. And have some more fun. On uh, 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. Hello. Hey, everybody. It's me, Wendy Williams, and I'm here to extol the virtues of L.A. weight loss. Spring has sprung, and it is time to take it off. And can I just say thank you, L.A. Weight Loss. Thank you so much for giving me confidence. I can't say that enough. You know, I lost over 15 pounds on the L.A. Weight Loss Program. And might I add, that was one year ago. And I am still balancing food and my weight loss and doing a pretty damn good job as far as I can say. Because I've been on other weight loss programs and I've gained the weight back. Oh, it's crept back, but it's been back. The thing about L.A. weight loss is it's not pills and, 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 and hocus pocus. It's a weight loss program that will give you the tools that you need to keep the weight off for a lifetime. It's not a temporary fix. It's a lifelong fix to your waistline problems. I'll give you the telephone number, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about L.A. weight loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. 1-800-448-TRIM. Now, you know that you need your vegetables and you know that you need your fruit but do you know that on LA weight loss you can actually enjoy a baked potato oh as long as it's small but the point is is that you can enjoy one do you know on LA weight loss you can enjoy eating at some of your favorite restaurants yes and do you know that on LA weight loss the food is not prepackaged it's real food that you purchase in the grocery store and before you know it you're losing weight and it's not unusual to lose seven pounds in the first week Trust me, I know. I think I dropped four in the first week. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing. Amazing. 1-800-448-TRIM. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. It's L.A. Weight Loss. 1-800-448-TRIM. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to go a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the final hour, the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience. And what a day it's been, boy. I was up this morning early. I got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, woke up my sister, and told her we are out of the house by 4.45. And at Fox this morning, because I did um, Good Day New York on the Fox um, television channel. Sounds so formal, doesn't it? And so I was there on time. Everything was going swimmingly. And um, I had a terrific time this morning. Shout out to Chris Galis. Special shout out to Lucy Nolan. Shout out to Denise and Beth. And Raven, everybody, Tommy, that made me feel so comfortable. Shout out to Mike Woods and Stacey Ann Gooden. All of you, all, you guys just made me feel so welcome. And thank you, LA Weight Loss, for helping me lose that last hard 15 pounds. Because if it wasn't for you, I would be total, totally focusing on all the monitors set up. They have so many monitors. I was so tempted to just like look each time, you know, catching fat angles, you know. I wore a sleeveless sweater. I still have on the outfit, you know. And I, you know, when I push my arms against my body, they spread out like like big fat arms. So I'm like, but I wasn't looking around like that. I did, thank you, LA Weight Loss. It's not commercial time for you, but I want to thank you for giving me the confidence to concentrate on reading the monitor and and making it happen this morning. Um, that was a wonderful time. Thank you, Jody Applegate. I was sitting in for Jody Applegate. That was an honor. Tomorrow they're doing uh, Lisa Evers, and um, and I forgot what they said on Friday. But I did have a fun time. And they're all going to be at my pink carpet party tonight, which is great. Yeah. The pink carpet party, the carpet actually rolls out at 8 o'clock. 
It has been sitting in my office for the past few days. Yeah, the pink carpet was actually in my office. Very ghetto. Um, and it's going to roll out at 8 o'clock. And I, I wanted to get there all cool and stuff, like 10 o'clock at night. But, you know, the girls in the office remind me, Wendy, this is a paparazzi party. Paparazzi does not stand around, you know, waiting all kinds of hours. They have a hard start and a hard end. And I'm like, damn, I should know that because I am part of that when I work the Wendy Williams is on fire. I know what we do. The first, like, half hour is boring, boring, boring. Then all of a sudden, a whole bunch of people flow in. Too many people even take pictures at and, and catch them all on the microphone. You'll notice even sometimes when I'm working the red carpet for the fire show on VH1 that I'll be talking to a celebrity and other celebrities will be, like, walking past behind, you know. So I'm getting there nice and early. <clears throat> they convinced me that it's not corny to get to your own party on time when it's pink carpet. So for those of you who um, won your way in, uh, make sure that you get there as close to 8 o'clock as possible, okay? You will not be corny or uncool if you don't show up because the party is over at the stroke of midnight, which is also nice. I thought the party was going until 4 in the morning. I was, I had uh, three different pair of shoes, high, lower, and lowest, to get me through various stages of the night. Come to find out the party's over at midnight. That's perfect. I got to get a flight out first thing in the morning. I got my whole um, CD tour about to start. I'm really excited. Trev Hollywood has done exceptional work, as usual, at putting together best of shows to keep you guys entertained. I apologize for not being here, but, you know, if I don't go out and promote it, who will? You know, so I, I'm sure you understand, but I apologize nevertheless. I'm going to New Orleans. Um, I'll be there all day tomorrow. Um, my radio station there is Q93, number one for hip-hop and R&B. And um, I'm doing a signing, hosting a party, and blah, blah, blah. And then um, on Friday, I'm going to be in Dallas. I don't have an affiliate station there, but um, I will be on with my man Skip Cheatham. And um, he hosts the number one show in Dallas. And, you know, visiting radio, doing, like, Good Morning Dallas TV, you know, getting my hustle on. You know, trying to get this CD out here. And um, then on... Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I'm going to be in Los Angeles hosting parties, doing record stores, doing more parties. And then Monday, it's all going to culminate with me being um, a guest on 100.3 The Beat, where I'm a jock there, but I'll be a guest on the morning show, The Block Party, starring John Sally and Ananda Lewis. You know, the, the morning show used to be Steve Harvey. And as we know, Steve Harvey is, um, was here filling in last week and, um, you know... He loves radio. I generally don't like people crossing over into my medium. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't really do it that well. Um, you know, and, and they use us. They use us in radio, you know, our, our medium. And then they, they forget us and they go off to Hollywood or they go to make movies or whatever. Like, like this is the most disgraceful medium ever. Like it's slumming being on the radio. This is an honorable profession. And a big shout out to Steve Harvey for repping, you know, a profession that I was formerly trained in and a profession that it, I know it's secondary to you because you're a comic first and probably an actor second and radio third, but you do it very well, Steve. And um, just to reiterate what I told you privately, and what I've said on the radio and what I've told my bosses, I'm voting for Steve Harvey. I love him. I love the Steve Harvey uh, situation. And then next week I'm back. But then on Wednesday I'm going to Philly. I'll be broadcasting though because my radio station, they're Power 99. They've got the switch. You know, you flip the switch and then you can be heard everywhere. <laughs> they got the switch. And Friday, next Friday I'll be in Chicago. And next, next Thursday I'll be in Chicago. Next Friday I'll be in Detroit. I'm hosting parties. I'm in both towns, and I'm pulling air shifts in both towns. So I consider it like kind of, a, you know, I'm Henrietta hustling because I'm doing the CD. But when I get to Detroit and Chicago, I'm out to impress the radio crime bosses. I want to pull it. You know, they, they let me pull a shift. And if I do well, and, you know, I get the phone calls and the faxes, and they get the phone calls. Who was that? Well, we don't know who she was. We don't know if we like her or not, but she, she was some different flavor. Then maybe they'll be added to our affiliate list. They don't know that I'm gunning for this, but I am. You know what I mean? I am. I want to shout out to the Rosado family. Susie and Ernie. Remember they came in last week? Susie bid with the jo Jackie Robinson auction, $1,900. She bid for uh, a, a, to come in and meet and sit in on the bonus hour and go to the comedy club and stuff. They are so nice. Not only did she bring me some Hennessy and a, a money book <clears throat> on, you know, on being frugal, which, you know, I am, but... And not only did they come to the comedy club and have a fabulous time, they were self-sufficient. They didn't need babysitting, you know, the back and forth checking. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? They were fine. 
But they also sent a big, beautiful pink bouquet of flowers. Um, just absolutely Susie, Susie. Thank you, Susie, and thank you, Ernie. Thank you both for, for um, you know, listening and <clears throat> laughing and, and judging. I throw judging in there because everybody does it. <laughs> so you guys... <clears throat> The Michael Jackson saga continues. Apparently, it's going to be in the form of a book by one of my fellow wags, the fabulous Diane Diamond. You remember her years ago. She was like a staff gossip wag for either the New York Post or the Daily News. She's been a survivor in this game. Um, Diane, I remember, helped me out years ago. I did a pilot <coughs> for... <sighs> One of the many Wendy Williams shows. Oh, you're going to be the next Oprah. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Anyway, she helped out. She came on the show. She was a guest to um, catch me up to speed with the, uh, some gossip. I, it was a little like segment show. I've done like five different pilots. I remember AJ Benza helped out with one. Um, Rashumba, the supermodel, helped out with one. It's tough to pull guests when you're doing a pilot because people want to know that, they're, that the FaceTime that they're giving you for your pilot is actually going to be turned over onto TV. And Diane came out and did it. So thank you, Diane. And so now she's on Court TV. <clears throat> she's an anchor over there. And she's writing a book about Michael Jackson's struggles uh, with the legal system. And it's going to be published by one of my book publishers, Atria Books, which is an imprint of Simon & Schuster, my first book, uh, Wendy's Got the Heat. That uh, was published by Atria Books, and that was just announced this week. The financial terms haven't been disclosed, and the book is not titled yet. But, you know, Michael was acquitted last week, and I guess Diane was probably, you know, penning parts of this book to begin with. And then when it was, he was finally acquitted, she probably, you know, rushed it around to the publishers to see, uh, you know, who was going to bite. And um, at one point, you know... Michael's supporters, excuse me, at one point, uh, oh, never mind. The point is, congratulations, Diane. And a big shout out to Atria Books. <sighs> I'm with a new book publisher. No hard feelings. I'm not saying that like, you know, any hard feelings, but I'm with a new book publisher. And um, I don't want to say the name just yet. I mean, you know, it's a big one. And... Um, I'm going to start my novel series. Shout out to my writer, Karen Hunter. Hey, Karen, remember, the car is leaving from the house at a particular time. I left you a voicemail. I'll see you as we walk the pink carpet together tonight. I love her, Karen. I think the bond that we built was, as I was telling the story of my life, oh my gosh, I mean, we would meet between the eighth floor of the Marriott and do the book and my house in between me, you know, giving the baby a bath. All right, hold on. Just give me 20 minutes to give him a bath, Karen. All right, you work on the notes that we already have. I'll be right back down, you know, like that. Um, and then, you know, the laughter and the crying through writing your life story, you just naturally, I guess, become close with somebody. And then she's just a cool lady all around. And, you know, we have our catch-up meetings at the old original Pancake House. Do you know where that is on Bloomfield Avenue? Yeah, that's in, in Jersey. Mm -hmm. I like her. She's a friend to my family. A friend to the family that Karen Hunter is. <clears throat> do you know Joss Stone? Of course you do. That's that soulful woman. It's freezing in here. That's, I still have on the same sleeveless sweater that I had on this morning. Good day. I was too uh, wrapped up in reading the monitors and getting the words right to even be thinking about cold. But you know what? After it was all done and I snapped back into reality, I was like, it is cold in here. And I've been in here for two hours and I never complained once. Damn. Good day, New York. I think in my head. <laughs> How you doing? And so anyway, um, Joss Stone apparently is going to be a part of a Motown style band. And maybe she's going to be the lead singer. I have no idea. Apparently, she's joined forces with Lamont Dozier. Now, Lamont Dozier, you know, of Holland Dozier, Dozier Holland, the legendary group, or excuse me, the legendary um, producers and songwriters from back in the day. So, everything old is new again. So, they feel as, I guess, Joss has this, you know, soulful delivery and whatnot, and she's um, a kind of like an it girl right now. And um, Holland Dozier Holland, they produce for her... Um, I'm doing, this is the hour of truth. 
Mm-hmm. I am, um, excuse me, they produced for her the, her single Spoiled off of her Mind, Body, and Soul CD. And that went, you know, platinum, I think a couple times. Anyway, they're looking for three hot African-American male singers to recreate the Motown style of soul, that type of band. And uh, it's a little sketchy to me, the details on whether um, she will be singing with this group or whether she'll just be there judging because she's got an inside side track on Holland Dozier Holland because she's being dug out by Bo Dozier, who happens to be the son of Lamont Dozier. That's her longtime boyfriend. <clears throat> the guys, by the way, that they're looking for for the group are between the ages of 22 and 30. And, um, you know, she's got her contract with The Gap now. She replaced Sarah Jessica Parker from Sex and the City. And her music and her face is all over the commercials for the summer. And did you hear about her birthday gift from, um, from her record label, EMI? They gave her. And Virgin Records, this is not a hint. I'm just simply telling a story. However, you can interpret it any way you want. Her record label gave her a $190,000 uncut diamond for her birthday. And she's 18. Wow. wow. Remember, the big deal was before she was 18, you know, she's got this boyfriend. And is that statutory? What is that? You know, like that. But when she's, what is an uncut diamond? Like, like I love diamonds and, and I know cut clarity, quality, you know, inclusions. You know, I've got uh, one of those looms that I, you know, I can look, I pull them out and, you know, like that. I'm always looking and checking. And, but an uncut diamond, what is that? Like a piece of coal? And then you can get it cut into whatever. Why Clef wears this really cool diamond? You know, his diamond is um, princess cut. And it's like seven carats. And, you know, it, it would be the square on the top. And it comes to a point, like all rings, the point is down in the setting. But how he got it set is the point at the top and the square ring at the bottom. Just something different. And also really nasty for a punch in the face. And, and really dangerous for the adopted daughter. Why Clef, you're a parent now. Why, Clef, you've got to get your diamond turned around. Claudie, our dude's got to get the diamond turned around. The baby, the baby. Oh, hell, he might not even wear diamonds anymore. Something happens, I guess. You know, after, after you have kids, you just kind of want to strip down. And then you eventually come back to the person that you are. Like, wait a minute. I'm letting this kid control my life. You know, I, I made a pact with God. I would drive a minivan if he would give me the baby and stuff. So I got, you know, one of those... Mercedes, but it's a minivan as far as I'm concerned. Those trucks, you can throw rims on them, hoodwink. You can thug them out with, you know, the dark tint. That's a minivan, dude. Minivan. And I'm like, hold up. I'm driving a minivan? I, I was paring down the makeup process, like just a little pressed powder and so on and so forth. I, ch- I changed my hair length to a more manageable length. And I started wearing sensible shoes to the grocery store. And then it was like just a light bulb moment. One day it all went off at the same time. It's probably about three months after, you know, the tummy tuck and everything really starts to settle in really good. I was like, wait a minute. This baby is controlling my life. No, 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 no. I was already here. The baby is included with and we make concessions for the baby. But you know what? Mother is still mother. Hey, Wyclef. Hey, Claudie. So Bobby Brown, did you all see Cindy Adams today? There was a lovely picture of Whitney Houston and Cindy Adams. You couldn't really see a lot, but you can see a lot enough to see that she's gained weight. And I mean, in a good way, like like healthy. She's got a cute dog and she's got all of her teeth back in her back in her skull. And she was up at Arista Records. The report was or what is it? J Records now. Arista's folded. She's up at J Records, visiting Clive. They've got five songs ready for the first for her CD, her debut after going through hell and, and surviving. And she was finger waving in the offices and smiling and you know posing for pictures and just generally being uh, great. So Whitney, good girl, good girl, good girl, Whit. In the meantime, Whitney's husband, Bobby. Uh, next Thursday, everybody, June 30th, is the de- debut of Being Bobby Brown on Bravo TV. Um, I don't have a showtime. As far as I'm concerned, I so don't want to miss this show. I'll just have a Bravo all day, you know, and, 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 and figure out what happens. 
he has two reasons for appearing on this reality show, for doing this reality show. The first one is that he wants a distraction to keep him off drugs. You know what? You got to admire his honesty. He says the second reason is to clean up his image for his children. Okay. Talking about it and acknowledging it is the first step. That's good. Did you hear what his two reasons are for the show? I'll repeat. The first one is that he wants a distraction to keep him off of drugs. He is acknowledging that he has a problem. And not that that's going to work, you know, the distraction. But the point is, is that he's... And the second thing is that he wants to have a good image for his kids. So now, Bobby, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I wish you well, Bobby. And I am watching Being Bobby Brown on Bravo next Thursday. It's going to be the bomb. It goes on to say here, give me the, the rest of this, Justin. The My Prerogative singer, who along with wife Whitney Houston has endured drug abuse problems and a fading career in recent years, admits he has high hopes that being Bobby Brown would turn around a series of negative events in his life. The father of four says, I need to do something to stay out of trouble. Too much free time ain't no good for someone like me. And now that I'm feeling healthy and off of drugs mm, and other stuff I was doing, I feel like getting myself back on track. But honestly, the main reason I want to do this is for my kids. They're always saying, Daddy, why do they always make you look like such a bad person in the press? And he goes on to say, you know, they don't see their father as a screw up. So, I, Bobby, I wish you well. I wish you well. And I'm going to be watching the show. And, and Whitney, uh, welcome back. And I, I look forward to your album. It'll be number one with a bullet immediately. And, and I know I'm going to do my part to help out. A stop, start, throw bombs on. You, know, you understand? You know what we do. We stop and start at the fire! This is a Wendy Williams exclusive. Even though every radio station in the country is playing it. You know, when I'm doing the show, in my mind, we're the only one that has the new G-Unit song or the new Whitney Houston. It's so funny, too. And that's Bob Lee doing that. This, uh, play it, Hollywood. Is that, that's not Spice, that's Hollywood. This is a Wendy Williams exclusive. I thought that that was, um... Oh, you, you pitched his voice down. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Well, um, just keep the this just in rolling. Relatives of the late hip-hop star Notorious B.I.G. gathered in Los Angeles yesterday as jury selection for the civil lawsuit brought up against the city of Los Angeles began. The suit alleges, and you probably already heard about this, but I just wanted to uh, reiterate because um, this is big. This is big. I, I got my eyes on this situation. And, um, oh, by the way, don't forget, sentencing day for little Kim is coming up on Friday. I got my eyes on that, too. Anyway, the suit alleges Death Row Records boss Marion Suge Knight ordered the 1997 murder of Biggie, whose real name was Christopher Wallace, and that former, and that former various Los Angeles Police Department officers helped cover up the murder and stifle the investigation. Knight has repeatedly denied involvement as has the LAPD and several days ago David Mack and Amur Muhammad, two of the men accused of actually committing the murder in various theories were dismissed from the com uh, complicated civil suit. Listen. There are also allegations that the LAPD had acknowledged officers were working for known gang members while they provided security for both Death Row Records and P. Diddy's, Sean P. Diddy Combs Bad Boy Records. Wow, that's a conflict of interest. Blah, 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 so on and so forth. I'm, I'm watching this case. <clears throat> they don't let you breathe, do they, Suge? Would you love to see uh, like the life story of Rodney Dangerfield on the big screen? See, I like it. I <clears throat> I like that. You know, I know a little bit about his story. I remember seeing it on E True Hollywood Story. Uh, he had a very unhappy childhood. Um, he was struggling on the comedy circuit. Finally, you know, he got he's got this wife, and you know, he wants to have kids. So he gave up comedy for twelve years and started selling aluminum siding and raising his family. And then he returned to comedy when he was forty. 
See, men can do things like that because women at 40 are, are painted as being, you know, dead, obsolete, out of here, old. <clears throat> Has-beens, washed up. Yesterday's news. <laughs> That's all she wrote. But Rodney uh, came back into comedy and did it with, um, you know, a, a bullet straight to the top. He did Caddyshack. He did Back to School, yada, yada, yada. I would love to see Rodney's story played out. I've never heard any uh, allegations of him being a woman beater and so on and so forth. But I always love to see com comedian story because that, that, that thing that they say, Tears of a Clown, is so true. Like so many comedians are just, oh, gosh, they got the, the darkest. And they've managed to turn... Uh, their sadness into a uh, joke form. I'd like to see that. You know who's looking at producing it? Well, the same people who did the Oscar-winning movie, Ray. The Ray Charles story. Yeah. Howard and Karen Baldwin, they're married. That's, that's good for keeping money in the cipher. I love that. They got all the money off Ray, and they're going to base this project off of uh, Rodney Dangerfield's memoirs uh, called It's Not Easy Being Me. Well, you know, he passed away last October. He was 82. He's got a widow. Her name is Joan. And through Joan, they're trying to acquire the life story rights. And um, great. Terrific. I look forward to seeing that. Dear Wendy, this is not a legal question. I'm just wondering. Pizza. Everyone eats it right. Well, you ever notice how the person who's making the pizza always has the hairiest arms and knuckles and they're throwing the dough over their arms and snatching it up and then they snatch up your slice. You ever wonder how many arm hairs you've eaten in your pizza and how much sweat has been on those arms on a hot summer day? Just something to think about. Here's another one, Wendy. Ever been in a greasy spoon type diner and notice how they have nasty aprons and they collect dirty money from you and answer the phone and then continue to handle your food? Yes, I have. Well, the great thing about greasy spoons is you usually go when you're five sheets in the wind and, and you would eat the food off the floor because you're so hungry and so out of it. You know what I mean? Here's another one. Wendy. You ever use the ketchup or the hot sauce left on the restaurant table? Hmm. Can you say spit or germs? God only knows what the person before you did. No, this is what I have to say about that. The coffee at the convenience stores. Who the hell still drinks their coffee out of those pots? Do you know how much anthrax, e-pills, whatever can be dropped in them. Now, the 7-Eleven that I meet, live near, I do have to say that they patrol them like the cops. Like, with every cut, they do it to me too and I don't mind it. They, when I go around to get my coffee and I never get it from the pots, I always get it from the machine. I know the machine is funky inside, but at least I know that's machine funk and not somebody coming in there dropping, you know, some, some pills in there, uh, you know, some hallucinogenics. Because you could do it very easily. The, the pots are very accessible. They're just wide open. The coffee's dripping in them. But at my 7-Eleven near my house, um, the dude's, uh, um, always, they're patrolling. They act like they're cleaning up and stuff. But I know what they're doing. And I love it. it. I love it. I don't drink that open pot coffee, though. My sister does. On the way to Good Day, uh, Good Morning, um, Good Day, New York. Good morning. Good, good hello, How you doing? On my way to the show this morning on Fox 5, um, we stopped at the 7-Eleven. And I got my usual mix of Hershey's chocolate, a quarter of a cup, and then the other three quarters I fill with um, vanilla cappuccino, or, or cappuccino. My sister reaches for the pot, the drip pot, and I'm like, ew. She's like, what? I was like, do you know what pe that people are crazy and what they do to those types of things? I mean, I don't know it for proven scientific, but I could just imagine if I was crazy and mad at the world. I'd go get me some hallucinogenics and drop them in there. Ugh. But about the ketchup and the hot sauce, no, my big thing is the germs. Like, what kind of nasty fingers were on it before? I always wrap the napkin around it, put the ketchup on, put it back down. This is all while my, my silverware is boiling in the hot cup of water that I ask for as soon as I get there. Anyway, here's another one. Why do they put the trays at fast food joints on top of the garbage and then serve you food on them? That's a good point. You can go ahead and crumble this up. I'm just curious. Thank you, Curious, and I will. Dear Wendy, 
I'm 25 years old and my boyfriend is 41. And we have a one and a half year old together. We live together and we've been living together for the last two months. In the beginning of our relationship, we used to do it, I get sex, every day, two and three times a day. Lately, we have not been having sex like we used to. He's complaining lately that he's too tired from work. And I understood because he works construction. But last night, Wendy, I woke up at 2 a.m. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? And the bed was shaking. Wendy, he was watching porno and beaten off. <laughs> now, I have no problem with him watching porno and, and taking care of himself, but we have not had sex in four days, and he used to wake me up at 2 a.m. and get his poke on. <laughs> I love that. Wendy. What do you think is happening? Can he be losing interest in me? I give him good professionals and put it on him. I am not ugly. I'm a five feet seven and weigh 150 pounds. Should I worry? Should I bring it up to him? Signed, Jersey girl. No. You know what self-pleasure is? Self-pleasure is taking care of you and not having to take care of the next person. Even when you are too tired, you might want to bust something off, but you don't necessarily want to reciprocate. And... And, and self-pleasure is the best way to do it. He left you sleeping at 2 a.m. as opposed to waking you up because he was perhaps too tired to please you. Now, not having sex in four... I mean, you do need to have a conversation with him. You know, I, I'm glad that you don't have a problem with him with the porno or the self-pleasure or anything like that. But, um, you know, maybe he needs uh, a B12 shot. Take it from me. They give you the energy. And if you don't have time for the shot, just get the B12 dots and sit it right underneath your tongue. They melt into your system. The shot is better, though, because that's a main line right into the... Right into your blood system. And good. So anyway, everybody, uh, what we're going to do right now, uh, Hollywood, is perhaps take a break. Um, we are getting closer and closer. Red carpet, oh, excuse me, the pink carpet rolls out at 8 o'clock. Um, I am in and out of getting prepared. Um, I actually... We have a hotel right down the street uh, from the radio station. The radio station has um, has secured me a room. Thank you, WBLF. Um, and I'm going to go over there and finish getting ready um, at 7 o'clock. And then I'm going to quickly go over to the red carpet, pink carpet party um, at an undisclosed location. And we're going to have a great time tonight. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I do need to get something to eat before because I do have a feeling that everything's just going to go right to my head. I haven't eaten anything all day. And I know that there's going to be a Negroidian buffet at the party and stuff like that. But I'm not eating. You know, in front of every... I can't eat and shake. I, I, you can't do all that. I just need a little something to eat. Just a little something. Oh, a quick note before we go into the break. Can I do a quick note? Okay, here we go. You know, WBLS, first of all, we're celebrating the 107 days of summer. Shout out to all my coworkers. I know you're all going to be there tonight. I can't wait. I love partying with my WBLS family and everybody else, too. So listen, WBLS is hosting Patti LaBelle live at Seaside for the summer concert series. It's in conjunction with the borough president, uh, Mar uh, Marty Markowitz. The event is taking place on Coney Island in Brooklyn. Just write down the date. August 11th. It's a free concert. Patti LaBelle, August 11th, Coney Island. Patti LaBelle, August 11th, Coney Island. New CDs in stores, classic moments. Patti LaBelle, Coney Island, August 11th, new CD. Uh, you get the picture. Oh, boy. We're going to take a break. Vaughn's up at 7 o'clock with the quiet storm on 107.5 W. 107.5 WBLS is doing it in the park, Cruden State Park, as we present the WBLS Music Festival. And you're invited to join us for two full days, a weekend of family fun, Saturday and Sunday, July 9th and 10th, featuring the Ohio Players, you are bad, bad, Miss bad. Stephanie Mills, Roy Ayers. Phil Perry, Bobby Caldwell, Pieces of a Dream and More. Listen to win. Log on to WBLS.com for more information. Sponsored by MSN. Go ahead, meet MSN Music. Buy one song for 99 cents. Get your next five free at music.msn.com. Celebrate the 107 days of summer right here on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is Amory, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS.
Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's the Wendy Williams Experience right here on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B, Classic Soul, and the Wendy Williams Experience. Vaughn Harper comes up at 7 o'clock with the number one night show for this particular crowd. Oh, yeah, you guys do listen to Vaughn. It's the Quiet Storm. Legendary. So, are you familiar with the workout trainer Mark Jenkins and are you familiar with Sharon Adams Hollywood when I go on um, tour is is Sharon in the best of anywhere oh no 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 no! don't read yours now just sometime during the summer you know there'll be another time when I'm off anyway let me just catch you up to speed and I'm doing it by recollection right now because I don't have all of the New York Post articles the Daily News everybody that's written this up um <clears throat> She is a woman who um, is, claims to have helped lay the foundation along with Mark J- Jenkins for a very, very successful exercise business that he has, a workout business. He's a trainer, and he trains a lot of celebrities. Um, he's no, been known to charge as much as $2,500, $3,000 an hour. He's been known to fly on the private planes you know, to London, to Paris, to work Diddy into shape for the um, marathon to work mary j blige into shape for her poom poom shorts i mean you know um his work speaks for itself but she um has problems with him as a man as a man um her claims are that you know he's he's um beat her up and 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 so on and so on and so forth just talk to her any old way that he wants disgraced her all kinds of stuff she came and told her story here on the experience about Mm, I want to say about a year ago, Sharon came up here. And I mean, you know, she, we had the violins going. It was all hearts and flowers. And I know that there are two sides to every story. Um, she said that at one point she was backstage. Mary J. Blige w- witnessed, you know, something go down. That I got to hear the best of show. When we tell you that the best of show is going to be playing with Sharon Adams, be sure that you're listening. Um, it's pertaining to her relationship, her, her live-in romantic relationship um, slash somewhat of a business partner with this trainer to the stars. Anyway, she heard me talking about him the other day and her because the article was written up again in the Daily News. Apparently, much of what she had to say in front of the judge, the, the case finally came before the judge, was thrown out of court. So she heard me talking and she says this. Dear Wendy, first I would like to say congratulations on your new album. Have fun at your party tonight. I would like to also thank you for not judging me and helping the women who have dated celebrities get their stories across. You are the wind beneath our wings. When there is no one else who will help us tell our story, we know we can always count on you. Today's, excuse me, oh, this was sent to me um, the other day. I just said have fun at your party tonight because it's today, but... She actually just said, have fun at your party. Anyway, today's Daily News tells the story of Mark Jenkins being found not guilty of assault on me. Mark also made comments about me telling lies about him sexually, physically assaulting me. If someone reads the paper, they would think that Mark Jenkins was cleared of sexual assault and the violence that he afflicted upon me. I would like to set the record straight. Okay, let me just stop for a moment. That's what I got from the article that he was cleared on everything, Sharon. But this is what she goes on to say. Mark Jenkins was cleared of only the assault charge that occurred in October on October 26th of 2003. My lawyer was not allowed to tell the jury about the paper which was being papers which were being served to Mark Jenkins and my lawyer wasn't allowed to speak of hospital records or any of the witnesses that I had who witnessed the abuse that Mark has done to me in the past. The sad part is most of my case was thrown out because of statute of limitations. I'm appealing the, the decision. Mark Jenkins also claims that he is going to sue me for slander, slandering his name. Yeah, I did read that in the Daily News. I challenge him to sue me for slander because that would allow me to bring up the case that he fought so hard to get thrown out of court. Ooh, good point, Sharon. Thank you for your support. I'll be listening. By the way, Wendy, can I get tickets to your show next week? What, the comedy show? Yeah, Sharon, I mean, yeah, next week, every Wednesday night. You know, just call up Sharon. and um, Or you know what? Fax me with your telephone number. Fax from the same fax machine that you did. That way I know it's you. 
Well, I mean, I understand the statute of limitations. It sucks, but it is true. And and if I can just say, Sharon was um, is claiming that she was physically assaulted by this man for years. And you might ask why she sat and, and took it for so many years. But, you know, that's the million-dollar question. You know, women, you know, get beaten in relationships. They get sexually assaulted, you know, in some cases. And, and stay for far too long, you know. And then, even if the relationship is over, it takes them so long to get a sense of self back together that by the time they look around and feel strong enough to fight the case in court, the statute of limitations is over. Hmm. Such is life. A cruel deck of cards. Hey, 50 Cent's The Massacre is going to be released this summer. Are you guys ready for that? He's adding four new songs, and he wants to do videos for every song on the CD. Okay, just thought I'd share that with you. Moving right along. Oh, by the way, you know, Sharon Stone left her son in the car while she went inside for a dinner date. Well, it's not exactly like she left him in the back seat of a locked Benz by himself in a dark parking lot. I mean, she left him in the car. The rest of the story is that the car was chauffeur driven and the driver was in the car and the boy was sleeping. And Sharon did go to a very, very high profile restaurant in London to have dinner with um, you know, a young suitor of hers. And the paparazzi light bulbs were going off when the door opened and everything. But inside they saw a young Roan. I think he's like four now, sleeping. In the meantime, here's the, ki- here's the kicker. Because I see nothing wrong with that. The driver was there, providing she knows who the driver is. This is a regular driver. The boy is sleeping. It was 10 o'clock at night. And so what? Like, you all have never taken your kids out, you know, your young kids out at 10 o'clock at night and left them in the car with a strange man. Oh, <laughs> I'm playing. But perhaps that wasn't a strange man. Perhaps that's her regular chauffeur. But what they, you know, the, the newspapers are trying to make a big deal of it. They're saying, well, you know, Sharon lives, you know, less than five minutes from the restaurant. Why didn't she bring him home, you know, to her London apartment before going out to eat with her young friend? You know, she's got a bastion of nannies that could have taken care of him and so on and so forth. Well, you know what? Maybe they just came from seeing an 8 p.m. showing of The Lion King. And maybe the show let out at quarter to ten. And maybe she got a cell phone call leaving the theater saying, look, I'm in the area. Let's have some quick dinner. And maybe as Sharon was getting ready to hang up the phone, she looked over at the boy and he was conked out. And she said, you know what? I can have dinner. It has to be quick. Because Roan is sleeping. I can just leave him in the car. He's with the driver. I mean, it wouldn't be me. I'm just trying to justify I really don't see Sharon Stone doing something this crazy, particularly because um, she's going through custody now. The divorce is finalized. Phil Bronstein wants the boy. And Sharon is not having it. And they're both tired of the boy not having a regular stable home. You know, that back and forth and back and forth, that's bad on the kids. Parents sometimes can get very selfish with that. That's bad on the kids. But Phil is not giving up. I mean, I don't say anything so bad about that for Sharon Stone. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Leave my son sleeping in the car, Wardell Fenderson at the wheel. You remember Wardell, everybody. <laughs> now, now, I know Wardell, and I like Wardell. Wardell gave me a great interview for my book, The Wendy Williams Experience. We all know Wardell's got crazy driving skills. He ran 11 traffic lights with Puffy screaming in the back and J-Lo screaming in the back. Club New York, Shine, busting all shots and so- whatever. And, and Wardell, Wardell has driven me. But, and what? What does that mean in comparison to my most precious, prized achievement? Wardell, you're a nice man. But can you please take me home so I can drop this kid off with a bastion of nannies so I can go out and have dinner with my jump off or whatever? (laughs) Oh, boy. Hey, have you guys seen The Honeymooners yet? It's not that well at the box office. I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, I got this fax from Michelle Morris, and she says, Wendy, did you know the Lowe's Movie Theater in Manhattan, located at the Lowe's Cineplex Orpheum on 3rd Avenue at 86th Street in New York, New York, 128th? 
Box office number 800-326-326-4778. Yeah, she ran it down. Where um, is blacklisting the Honeymooners movie? What? For example, when I went there to see Batman over the weekend, I noticed on the ticket buyer, buyer screen that the movie was sold out at all times. So I was like, wow, maybe people are actually going to support this movie, The Honeymooners. When Batman was over, Wendy, I did what I usually do and tried to sneak into the other theater unnoticed so that I can see The Honeymooners. And it turns out the theater was vacant, Wendy. No one was in there. No one. They were falsely advertising that the movie was sold out. That means America, or should I say white America, wasn't or isn't ready for crossover status when it comes to black actors. And in this day in history, I am outraged. They didn't even give the movie a chance. Wow, Michelle, thank you. Manhattan. Lowe's, Lowe's Cineplex Orpheum, 3rd Avenue at 86th Street, New York, New York, 128. Box office number 800-326-326-4778. Wow, man! That's pretty deep! They had sold out on all the theater, um, but nobody was in there. Oh, you know what? I'm telling my gaps. And he's going to be at my party. I'm telling. I'm telling. That's a damn shame. You know, I was telling everybody a feel-good story the other day about my girl, Oprah. Shout out to Gail. I hope to see you tonight, Gailie. It's Gail King. She listens in her office, but she's got a few nervous reservations about actually coming to the show. I've actually met her before. I was at something with um, the fabulous Gladys Knight, and Gail was there, and it was like a, a luncheon-esque type of thing. And um, Gail was very familiar with the show to the point that she was like, you know, she kind of gave me a Whitney Houston. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Like that. Hi, Gail. Anyway, Gail's best friend, Oprah, is just, you know, so get ready with your hankies, as Mike Walker says. Oprah noticed that the janitor at her um, Chicago apartment was absent for a while so she checked with the building manager and the building manager said that his wife is in the hospital with cancer so oprah tracked down the hospital and informed them that she'd be paying all the medical bills and the janitor was so overwhelmed that uh well so overwhelmed that's nice <clears throat> it must be fabulous to be able to have money like that to just be able to do a good deed of that magnitude at the drop of a dime I mean, it, that kind of makes things like helping an old lady across the street seem obsolete, doesn't it? Jeez. Well, you all, I have to tell you, as I usually do in parting, I love you for listening today. I appreciate you for watching this morning on the Fox 5. Good day, New York. Thank you once again to Lucy and Chris and thank Mike Woods and Stacey Ann. And I'll see you all at my party tonight. The winners, I'll see you at the party tonight. Shout out to the celebrities that are going to be there. I'll see you there. The press, the pop. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. UPN 9 News is going to be there, too. I think you'll probably be see some coverage tonight there. And. And um, I'm going to put on my big shoes and continue to tease my hair. Um, Steve, you're doing a great job thus far. Thank you. I love the eyelashes. Thank you, darling. Um, you all, um, this is where I go on um, tour. So I, we won't talk again until Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you Tuesday. All right. Well, enjoy the best of shows. You all be safe. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man. And WBLS music starts next. In the community with 107.5. It's the 27th season of Celebrate Brooklyn. Free concerts at Prospect Park, Band Shell, Prospect Park, West and 9th Street. Join us this Thursday, June 23rd for Hugh Masekela for a full schedule of events. Look for the link on WBLS.com. BLS. Mishulu Parkway, join Bob Lee and catch the spirit of the Bronx this Sunday, June 26th at the Bronx Day Parade. Viewing stand is at Van Cortland Avenue East. Parade starts at 12 noon. BLS. Calling all filmmakers, don't miss the Martha's Vineyard African American Film Festival, August 11th through August 14th. BLS. This community calendar is sponsored by P. Diddy's The Bad Boys of Comedy. Laugh now, chill later, Fridays only on HBO. For more info, log on to WBLS.com.